What's happening guys, Dan Devlin here and today we are talking about After Effects. Specifically in After Effects we're talking about motion tracking and one of the easier ways of doing that. So this is part of a two, three part series uh, that we're going to do on After Effects showing you the ins and outs of little tricks and tips uh, along with the, some of the major stuff that you can actually do in After Effects. So with that, let's get straight into it. Okay, and so we're going to talk about motion tracking in After Effects using a, a piece of footage that I shot earlier uh, to stick on a logo and track that motion to my hand. Um, now, basically, as you can see from the shot that you can see here, um, what I've got is I've got my finger up and I've got a sort of inner pinch motion and, we're, and my hand's going to be moving about and what have you, and that, that logo is going to track to this area. Now... Uh, I'm lucky, I'm wearing a ring, um, but, uh, and so that gives me a nice clean object to actually uh, track from, uh, although you can track from anything basically, it just might take a little bit more time depending on how clean that object is, so how different it looks to the surrounding area and how much more uh, obvious it is for After Effects to be able to track to it. So with that, let's get started and let's see how we go about doing that. So we right click and we click new null object and that brings up a new null object. Basically that is a new layer that we're going to use to track. You get some a little red square on the screen which has basically got little, a load of little squares on it. At that point then we go across to tracker and we hit uh, track motion and then you bring up two little squares. Um, that those two little squares, the inner square is the square that will actually be tracked by After Effects and the outer square, that is the square that After Effects will look pixels either side, it will search around that area looking for that tracking point. If it loses it or the tracking point, in the, the actual tracking point in the middle can't find it. So what we'll do is we grab that, make it the right size, we grab that and we drag that onto the uh, point that we want to track, in this case my ring, um, and we just make sure that it's over that. And then from that point on, we sort of adjust the size of the square, make sure that it's all how we want it to look, go across to tracking, and then we, once we're at tracking, we just click analyze forward, which is a little play button, which is going the play way. There's two, one going one way, one going the other, one is track back, one is track forward. And at that point there, we just literally sit and we fingers cross that it will analyze and it will stay in position and follow where that tracking point goes. It can and often does lose tracking point uh, and at that point what we have to do then is we go in and we do that manually. So as we can see it has lost the tracking point from that point so what we have to do now is hit U on our keyboard that brings up all the little tracking points as you can see from this video here we've got all those little points going up and at that point then we can move it back frame by frame and we can then go along and we can just find a frame where it has got, it's got the last frame it got the tracking point and the next frame on we just grab the box and we just drag it along one frame and we just completely do that continue to do that and we continue to do that until we've got to the end of where we need to be for our tracking motion um, and we just do that one frame at a time seems like a lot of work to be fair it takes a few minutes at most if that, it's a pretty easy process to do. It's a click and drag, click and drag. It's not a massive amount of onerous work. So once we've done that, we go to the very first frame that we tracked and we select the play backwards. So we analyze backwards button and we do the whole process again, which basically analyzes it backwards and uh, it then moves us to the front of the frame. So once we've adjusted everything, we just go up to uh, apply and then a little box comes up with X and Y and you just click OK on that. You don't have to worry about what that says. And that sets in stone those tracking points. We can then click U on our keyboard, get rid of those tracking points. And at that point then, we can then go to adding the next step in our uh, process. And that is to add in our logo. So we've got our After Effects logo. We're going to drag that into the comp. Uh, we're just going to drop that straight onto the uh, system. And there it is. Bring it to the top so we can see it. It's going to be massive because obviously it's a huge file. So what I'll do is I'll just go quickly in and uh, to transform and we'll just reduce the size of it so that it fits within our comp. Um, there we go. And now we've got some handles so we can actually just manually drag those and make it as small or as big as we like. We can also hit shift and if we all shift down that will constrain the proportions of our logo. 
So what we'll do is we'll bring it up, the, the, uh, the footage, to the point where we want to track it so we know how big it's going to be. And we'll just set our logo into the right place between those two fingers, between that pinch point. Um, and then what we can do is we can set it to the correct size. So once it's set to the correct size, we can then use that little swirly tool, which is called the pick whip. I love that sound. I love that word. Pick whip, 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 pick whip, whip. And we can just drag that and we can drag it onto the null object. And once we've dragged that to null object, it basically sets the logo to match everything that that null object is doing. And that null object contains our tracking data. So we'll resize it from workflow flow point of view and we'll make everything the same length. And then at that point, when we play it through, as my hand comes up, you will see that the logo also matches where my hand is. Now it's not quite right, quite the right size. So from that point there, what I can do is I can just pause the video and I can just select the logo and I can just rearrange the size. That's not altering the um, tracking data at all. It's just making the logo bigger or smaller. And then from that also, once we've got that logo moving about on the, um, on the screen, we can see we can alter it and we can change slight variations of things such as opacity or uh, motion blur, etc, etc, etc. So for me, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the motion blur because I think that it needs a little bit of motion to it. It needs to look like it's moving and it needs to look like it is part of the video. But also need to change the opacity as well because, as you can see, it doesn't fall clean off the screen. Um, it just sits at the bottom looking a little bit weird, like a little bit half a logo peeking out. So what I'll do is I'll add a couple of keyframes in and... Um, from that point there, I'll put a keyframe at 100% and I'll stick another keyframe in further down and we'll make that 0%. So that means when it goes, it's going to drag through and it's going to disappear as it comes off the screen. And I'll do exactly the same at the beginning. I'll put a 0% opacity on at the beginning and then about maybe 10 or 12 frames forward, stick 100% on so that it appears as my fingers turn into a pinch. So it's come up, I'll pinch, and it'll look like it's appearing. At the minute, as you can see, it's at about 17%. So I'll drag it down to zero. And then as we get to the pinch there, I'll put another keyframe in, and that will make it 100%. So stick a keyframe in there, and 100% it there. As you can see, it disappears and appears as I'm talking. Now, motion blur, uh, you can add motion blur to it and that will be done, that's done, it's nice and easy to do. There's basically a little icon along the side here which looks like little circles. You can click on those and that will add motion blur to it. Now, motion blur is not active in After Effects by default because it is massively processor intensive. Um, you have to switch it on by using that little icon there. Uh, and you basically, what I would do is I would switch it on, view it in motion blur, switch it back off again, carry on working because let's be fair about it, your computer will catch fire if you keep it on all the time. And that basically is it, guys. So uh, it's pretty simple to do. It's a pretty easy, pretty easy tutorial. It's a pretty easy process. Um, it sounds more complicated than it actually is. It isn't really that complicated. There is another way of doing it, which I'll cover in a later video, which is 3D tracking, um, which is a more interesting, more intricate way of doing things. It's actually probably a little bit easier um, but it's good to know all the different ways that it can be done so if you did like this tutorial and you thought it was useful please do like and subscribe below um, click that like button click the bell icon so that you get notifications so that you know that when new videos come out and i will see you guys next time